Hello and welcome to the final episode of Dialogues on the Art of Arab Fashion in collaboration with the Office of Public and Cultural Diplomacy at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Corporation in Abu Dhabi for our final session, Threading SDGs and the Art of Dress. I am Emma Farmer and will be your MC for today's webinar. The format of today's talk will be approximately 50 minutes of discussion followed by Q&A from you, the audiences. Please feel free to ask us questions via the Zoom Q&A function. For those joining for the first time, the Zay Initiative was founded to preserve the cultural heritage of Arab dress through the collection, documentation and digital archiving of Arab historical attire and their stories. The goal is to empower and sustain global cross-cultural dialogues. Anyway, that is enough from me. Allow me to introduce you to our founder, Dr. Reem Almatwali, your host for today's session, who will introduce you to our guests. Dr. Reem. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another session. Um, we're getting close to the holidays, and I wash, wanted to wish everyone a wonderful time this holiday. And today I have two young ladies. One is joining us from Norway. The other one is joining us from Greece. And I'm so excited to introduce them to you. And I'm going to try what we tried last time and to allow them to do the introduction themselves. So welcome Iman and welcome Hiba. Let's start with Iman. Can you please introduce yourself to our audience? Hello, Doctora. Hi. First of all, I want to thank you, Doctor, for this invitation. Uh, I'm Iman Ziodi, Charge d'Affaires, and our and UA Embassy in Greece. I have been here since uh, almost a year and a half. Uh, I'm a mother for four kids, and uh, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> you graduated from? I'm graduate from uh, United Arab uh, uh, Emirates uh, University in Al Ain. Uh, I have uh, Baccalaureus in uh, political science and economic. It's uh, the major is the political science and the minor is the economist. So uh, I have little bits of the politics and the economist. Wonderful, wonderful. And Heba, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Yes, hi. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, I'm Hibel Janebi, uh, a counselor at uh, UAE Embassy in Norway. I graduated 2004 from United Arab Emirates University. Uh, I have bachelor degree in political science um, from United Arab Emirates uh, University and master degree in international relations from Zayed University as well. I am the first female diplomat in London. I started 2009 until 2012. And um, also I am the first diplomat in Norway as well. And uh, let's make it short and uh, that's it. I am so proud to have you both there. I think you are doing a great job representing your country and you make us all proud, really. Uh, today we are going to be speaking about a very interesting and, and to many very complicated topic, but I am sure that between the three of us we can introduce it in a lively and exciting way to our audience. And uh, uh, we will carry it in a dialogue format, so I hope that uh, we will enjoy it as much as everyone else that is joining us. Um, to start with Iman, I was hoping that you would help me introduce the concept of SDGs to our audience. Uh, the Sustainable Development Goals SDGs, also known as the Global Agenda 2030, are the collection of 17 goals and aim to eliminate poverty, protect the plants, ensure human security, welfare, and well being. The SDGs were set in 2015 by the United Nations General Assembly, are the international to be achieved by year 2030. The UAE has been at the form, front for, form of sustainable development. All six national priorities which define the UAE National Agenda Vision 2021 are linked to SDGs. In order to, element, to implement the goals of the UAE cabinet established the National Committee of SDG as an institutional frameworks, which seeks a elegant SDGs with the UAE's development agenda. 
Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, in, in simple format, it is basically uh, an agreed format between all nations in order to achieve specific goals uh, by the year 2030, correct? And most of the uh, UN member countries have agreed to, to, to work their way towards that. And we at the Zay Initiative, in our small, small and simple way, have um, identified a number of these goals that work within the mission, the overall mission that we have at the Zay Initiative. And today I thought maybe, because we cannot speak about 17 goals, they are way too many to cover in one session. So we identified four of these goals that we could talk about that relate both to the UAE and how UAE has developed in that area, as well as how we at the Zay Initiative on a much smaller and simpler level managed to um, string along and try and do our part in this uh, objective. And to start with, I thought we would begin by introducing um, what the Zay Initiative is all about. Uh, can we have the next slide, Emma? Uh, it is based on a collection, and this collection has managed to grow within the past two years, and from it stemmed a number of uh, sub-goals that we are identifying and linking to these D uh, SDGs that are happening all over the world. So a basic dress collection, and as you see, from one's dress, one can surmise so many different things. And I'm sure we will get to the next slide in order to see how you two have been able to develop this and how you have been participating through your dress in representing your identity, your country, your heritage, and so on and so forth. We at the Zay Initiative took this and took it further one more step by trying to establish ways that we can, can connect with the globally with uh, everyone else in order to sustain Arab culture through its dress heritage. Uh, I know Iman that uh, you in particular, you both, both of you actually, and we'll start with you Iman, uh, you've practiced wearing uh, the UAE national dress. Can you paint a picture on what we're seeing here? Iman, can you hear me? Yes, Doctora. Those uh, are the pictures. Uh, one of them is uh, from our national day, the uh, uh, 40, uh, 49. And uh, the other one that uh, from the exhibition of the, uh, to show the, our culture, our uh, clothes, our uh, lifestyle as a emirati society for the Greek. It's not an easy because uh, Doctora, uh, I am. I might be the first charity affair on the from the Gulf as a female charity affair, and uh, I I want to take the opportunity to show my culture. Uh, uh, the Greek uh, are really interested in our culture. They want to know more. Uh, since I came in, uh, to Greece, I faced uh, one of the brokers. She's a broker for a house, and uh, she told me. She asked me uh, exactly what. Where's the black dress? Yeah, <laughs> uh, I understand uh, what what she wants, but uh, but I told her why it's you take the view of the black dress. She told me because uh, I didn't uh, go out of Greece, and you are the first lady to sew from the Gulf, and you are wearing like a colorful dresses, like a normal one. I told her um, uh, to be honest, uh, the uh, it's kind of respect to wear the black, but my culture is full of colors. It's full right. of luxury girls. It's full of uh, uh, woman empowerment, woman respect. It's not like what you are seeing in the TV, like wearing black in the black and stay at home. And uh, she was uh, saying uh, it's first time for me to see a lady from the Gulf. And I think I'm, I am really shocked. She was shocked. Uh, this uh, give me the power to show my culture. They have to know more about us. Uh, it's not an easy thing, but it's our job as diplomats to show the others how is the UAE, how the lady in the UAE uh, to change their point of view in our society. It's, it, it's full of luxury things. It's full of gods. It's full of colors. It's full of woman empowerment. It's not something that when we sit at home and wearing black and black everywhere. It's not like that. 
that give me the power to take any chance to express my culture to uh, wherever I have exhibition, I talk my things, the cultural things, and I go there to present my culture. Uh, to, uh, and the very interesting way of uh, attracting them to take the kids. Yes. Uh, they asked to take a photos with the kids. They were like, oh, is your kids wearing that? I told them, yes, it's our lifestyle. Even now, no, we are not uh, faking this only to show you. No, it's our, it's the UAE. We are full of colors. We are full of uh, luxurious things. We are uh, respecting the women and this is what we are. Yes, it's wonderful. And, and, and I commend you for the work that you're doing, both through your position and through uh, involving your children because you're installing in them uh, to be proud of their heritage and to represent their heritage, as well as presenting ways for people uh, from other um, societies to get to know and learn about your own culture. And I think uh, Hiba, you too, I, we prepared another slide here uh, and that shows Hiba also practicing the same thing. And I thought maybe you could give us a few thoughts about your experience in wearing your national dress. Uh, well, my experience, doctor, that uh, uh, I would like to ensure that the national dress um, uh, more attraction than the suits and the official events here. And <laughs> you can see this picture with Foreign Minister Surayda uh, in the uh, in Norwegian National Day in May, uh, two years ago. And she was really impressed by my abaya and uh, you can see the pearl that one of the traditional pieces that we've got. Uh, and um, she was so- and I, I, I love also your green, uh, <laughs> green, my favorite color, your green mzarai, which is the gilded uh, kandora that you were wearing in the other one. Yeah, this one, I, uh, um, when I was charge the affairs uh, for a long time, uh, here almost one year and a half, uh, our national day 47, um, I remember one of the European uh, ambassadors, the first comment that I got, Hiba, you set a life example for women empowerment. When yes. you give yes. your speech, when you highlight the UAE efforts and um, uh, the achievements that have been done by uh, UAE, thank God, we are a way uh, like... Uh, 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 comparing to other countries. Um, I just would like to tell you that Norway, uh, number one in women empowerment, and when they yes. see uh, representing UAE in many of the events or seminars, wherever I go, I um, felt how they are impressed by UAE women empowerment, uh, just being a diplomat in such country. That's so wonderful. You, you really make us feel very proud and you are a great example of this, uh, uh, what this country is aspiring to do uh, on all levels on, and on many levels as well. Uh, just to take us back to our main subject, as we just mentioned, there are 17 sustainable development goals that were adopted by all UN nation member states in 2015 and that took place in Paris as a universal call to action to end poverty, to protect the planet, and to ensure that all people enjoy peace and prosperity by 2030. I wanted to highlight that we at the Zay Initiative are particularly aligned with four of these SDGs that you see in front of you. Uh, and we are going to begin now to um, illustrate together how both the UAE and the Zay Initiative are aligned in developing these. And we will start with number four, which is, I think Heba is going to help me with this. Yes, sure, Doctor. Please go ahead, Heba. Well, I would like to start that late uh, Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan, may God mercy his soul, uh, say the greatest use that can be made of wealth is to invest in creating generations of educated and trained people. Uh, accordingly, the UAE's Ministry of Education developed Education 2020 strategy, and the key area of focus has been 
to transform K-12 programs to ensure that students are fully prepared to attend universities around the world and compete in the global marketplace. Also, the UAE is a signatory on uh, the UN's uh, Convention on the Right of Persons with uh, Disabilities and the uh, Optional Protocol, and accordingly, the MOE's strategies has adopted all public schools and facil to facilitate education for people of uh, determination. Uh, which ensures uh, that they have access to the same educational opportunities as students in the regular education system. Uh, the UAE has ensured uh, that education is av uh, available to all ages and both genders. And today, literacy rates uh, for both genders are close to 95% uh, in UAE. Amazing. UAE host uh, the Regional Center for Educational Planning, UNESCO, which is uh, the technical arm uh, of the UAE's Ministry of Education that responsible for building individual ca capacities, developing human uh, resources and um, knowledge in the areas of planning and uh, policies to fulfill national priority in line with the international best practices. Uh, and uh, finally, the UAE provides free education to UAE citizens in public schools. The UAE hosts a wide range of highly accredited universities, both public and uh, private, including NYU Abu Dhabi and Sorbonne Abu Dhabi. And thank you. <laughs> Very, very, very true. That's so uh, wonderful, um, Hiba. And I think that the Zay Initiative has followed in the footsteps of all these goals and aspirations. Uh, we at the Zay Initiative have managed to produce the number of publications that relate to UAE culture, be it on an architectural uh, level or as far as the Zay Initiative is concerned, the uh, dress and women's heritage and culture and um, we have managed to also create uh, educational books for the children based on these ba uh, basic publications that we have created. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud to say we even managed to produce one which was the Qasr al Hassan one in Braille, which was the first book to be published in Braille from an Arabic library uh, within the area. And, uh, uh, it had a great success and I think it's being used uh, all around through different uh, institutions that require it. We also uh, have managed to um, work hard on a digital platform and uh, this digital platform I'm very proud of because although we started collecting articles and documenting and researching the information that is related to these articles from all around the Arab world, as well as the United Arab Emirates, we managed to uh, produce a digital archive and it happens to work with the, with the situation. I mean, COVID happened by, by chance. Uh, we were already starting our, our research and development part of this digital archive and we launched it within the COVID year and it worked to our advantage. And I thought I would produce a small video clip that teaches people or introduces the audience to what is the digital archive and how they can navigate through it. So if you permit me, I'm going to show this small clip and we can watch it all together. Yes, please. Navigate. Oh. I guess we are not going to watch the clip. How are we doing, Emma? Navigating to the Zay Initiative is very simple. Just type the zay.org. You will arrive at our homepage from where you can exploit. And to see our dress and adornment collection, click collection. From here, scroll down to see the different articles. If you want to learn more, click View Details. You will need to create an account if you haven't already. But once you have logged in, the world of Arab dress awaits you. Every article includes detailed imagery of each piece. Sometimes it will include the photographs of those who once owned it or wore it. 
The information on the right of these images presents a brief introduction. Clicking on the image will enlarge it for more details. Others will include video clips with further explanations when possible. Underneath the images is an in-depth study of the article, including the tangible and the intangible. You will notice some words are in red. Point your mouse over them and you can view the definition of that item. If you prefer to view in Arabic, click at the top right hand corner. Here you can navigate again in the same manner, where you will find all the information as well as the pop-up glossary terms in Arabic. If you want to go to more detail, where possible, we include suggestions of additional reading material, including links to our blog and other websites. We are working very hard on making our full and constantly growing collection of over 1,350 pieces available online for everyone to explore. We aim to become the most reliable guide to Arab dress and adornment in the world. And we look to you all to help us sustain the legacy. So as you see, it's a colossal amount of work. It is very much academically grounded and it requires a lot of background information and research from uh, different scholars and researchers in both Arabic and English. And it's going, it is the first one of its kind to be presented from the Arab world to introduce this sort of culture. Another aspect that we are carrying through the Z initiative is a scholarship program, which we are hoping to launch within the coming 2021, whereby we are trying to encourage those, especially women who are in the area between jobs or from starting from university going into the job uh, uh, station whereby they can work at, to help sustain their overall um, experience as well as um, uh, resources and we're hoping that people who are interested in this field will come forward and apply to these scholarship programs that we are presenting to them. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Iman um, we are going to, you are going to help me here in introducing the second, uh, the second goal that we were talking about, or the third, are we in the third one now? I'm, I'm lost. But go ahead, Iman, please. Yes, Victor. Uh, gender equality is one of the 17 sustainable development goals. UAE's 2021 vision is linked to the sustainable development goal. In this framework, the strategy for the Empowerment of Emirati Women 2015-2021 has supported the advanced empowerment of women education, health, economic opportunities, political participation, and gender balance lawmaking for five successful years. Following our father's vision, Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan, today we achieved that the UA ranked 35 out of 189 countries in women empowerment. According to the 2019 Human Development Report commissioned by the United Nations Development Program. Further, the Economic Forum 2020 Global Gender Gap Reports state that the UAE is one of the region's best performance countries having closed the gender gap by 66%. It's worth men mentioned that the Emirati woman makes up 60% of the country's total UAE National University gradu graduates and 43% of the UAE National Workforce. According to the presidential degree announced in 2018, 50% of Federal National Council selected members should be women. Doctora, I think all of the ladies from the UAE are proud to be from the UAE because of our wisdom leadership. Uh, we don't get promises as women. 
we get uh, actions from our leaderships. They True. don't promise us to give us the power. No, they support us and they uh, just give us equipment and they give us anything we the want. Tools. Just the tools, yeah, to show up the Emirati woman. And really, we are lucky to have this wisdom leaderships. Yes, I, I totally agree. And that is why uh, through the Zay Initiative, we try to play an integral part, even if it's on a small level, by uh, recording these achievements of these women, by uh, putting it down in a documented form so that it is available for the next future. If I, if I may show the next uh, slide, I will illustrate that with a simple fact. I mean, look at this object, which is a gold object. I'm sure you both know it, it's called Ftaq which is the ring that a woman would wear on her toe. And it's one of the very traditional gold pieces that women wear in the United Arab Emirates. And this ftah belonged to the lady that you have put, uh, shown here in the image. Uh, sadly, she passed away a year ago and she was a burga maker. She spent most of her life making those burgas that you see the samples of. And she made them for, our, for the Al Maktoum family. I was very lucky to meet with her because her daughter identified her uh, as a form of celebration of her mother. She contacted us and she said, I have only one ftah, not two, because usually women wear two of them, yani it's a pair. But she had one and she said, would you accept it as something that would remind people of my mother and tell her story? And we were very excited to go, to go and meet this lady. I was privileged that I met her, although she was in bed and she was very old and very thin and, and uh, in, her, in the la last year of her life. But it was a pleasure to meet with her, to talk with her, to record her story. And now we have these objects from her that people are going to be able to see, experience, learn about through the digital archive that we have. They don't have to come here to see it in an exhibition, although we do participate in many exhibitions, but those who can't reach us now, they can see it through the digital archive and be able to learn about this woman. And this woman's story will stay behind even after when I or you or ever, all our generation will go. So her life and her story and her legacy will continue hopefully through this initiative that we're starting to work on, which is such a wonderful uh, aspect. And it touches people's lives very, very um, simply, but effectively. And I prepared another example for you um, in the next slide. This is a wonderful, wonderful story. And before I show you the clip about it, I wanted to just prepare you to it. Uh, this is an image that I saw one day as I was looking through the newspapers and researching, and it is of uh, young, um, young ladies and one young man, mashallah, Ali Zayed bin Nahyan and Nahyan and his cousins. And they were, they were photographed during a festive, a festive occasion with His Highness uh, Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed the president of the United Arab Emirates. And I was so excited to see the young girls dressed in their national dress. So I called their mother, who is a very good friend of mine, Moza bint Muhammad bin Khalid al Nahyan, And I said, Moza, I, I really want the dress that Hamda is wearing, the young girl on the right. And she said, what are you talking about, Doctora? Hamda is now around 20 years old. This was taken about seven or eight or nine years ago. She was just a child. What am I going to do? How am I going to get this dress? And I said, no, we have to keep it. It is the only image that I can find with these beautiful young girls with Sheikh Khalifa. And this is a very important image. I must have this dress. So they went back and they looked around and they asked around and they located the dress that they had given away to somebody who lives all the way in Morocco. And they had to send for it and ask for that dress and have it brought back. And now it is part of this collection at the Zay collection. So imagine, yani this article of clothing went from one place to the other, and then we had it brought back just because of an image. Isn't that an amazing story? So I'm going to show you now uh, a clip about this dress to, to, to tell you more about it.
The Zay Initiative presents the Stob Kandora Miazza, made in 2011. The stress was spotted by Dr. Rim Tariq al Mitwali in this rare photo taken when the UAE President Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed al Nahyan was visited by his nephew and a group of his nieces as they paid their respects during Eid celebrations in 2011. Worn by Sheikh Hamda bin Hazar bin Tahnoon bin Muhammad al Nahyan, age seven then, it was later donated by her mother, Sheikh Moza bin Muhammad bin Khalid al Nahyan to the Zay collection. This type of combined overgarment and tunic, Thob Kandora, evolved post-1990s as a two-in-one special occasion dress. This example is made from panels, miazza. Traditionally, the paneling evolved out of frugality, when garments were made from several pieces of expensive leftover fabrics. Over time, it came to be recognized as a style in itself called miazza, from the Arabic word mjazza, which means paneled. This garment is machine embroidered in gold metallic thread zari with arabesque motifs. The embroidery accentuates the neckline's central axis and paneling joints, as well as sleeve cuffs of the inner tunic. The embroidery is then further accentuated with royal purple, grass green, and deep red Swarovski crystal iron-ons, fusus. The Zay Initiative, an wonderful. ode to the past. I think it's wonderful that even the, uh, especially the older generation are very much tuned with the necessity and the need for us to preserve heritage and culture. And they play a very instrumental role in doing so. This is another example that I wanted to show here uh, that uh, exemplifies how we as a nation, as an Arab nation as a whole, as well as in the UAE, scent is very important to us. Rihat heli, Arabi. So it's very important that our scent, it, it means so much to us. And this is a dress that we received from another donation. And it was also a young, uh, young lady like yourselves who wanted to keep the memory of her grandmother who had passed away in the 90s. I haven't met this lady, but I met her granddaughter who saved this kandora, which was embroidered in silver. And these are very rare to find in these days. And she called me up and I met with her and we became friends. And she said, I have one condition. I will give you my grandmother's grand kandora if you promise me that you will not separate it from her scent. And she gave us a small vial, which you see in the picture there, which has the perfume her, of her grandmother, so that her grandmother's scent will always stay with her dress, which I think is such a wonderful, wonderful expression of love and gratitude and a way of uh, sustaining the memory of that generation that came before. Because these women are the ones who empowered the likes of you and enabled you to lead in the positions that you are leading in. I hope you agree with me. Uh, well, Doctora, regard, I totally agree with you. I remember my grandmother, she got a uh, mendoos uh, yeah. full of her stuff, either uh, the same kandura that you presented or burga, and she used to do her, she used to do, make her own dresses by herself. And um, until today, I still remember she passed away a um, long time ago. I still remember her uh, perfumes. When she mixed, she used to mix the perfume, you know, oud with mask, with the uh, zafaran, and the oh, many yeah. scents that uh, still in, uh, has a very uh, touch memories uh, to, at very close memories to my heart. Very true. Very true. And, and, and speaking of women empowerment, uh, we, we took this a step further at the Zay Initiative, and we created this past year, we worked on an exhibition called Draped in Heritage, whereby we took uh, items from our collection. And as you see here, you see Borgo, Sheila, Thob, Kandora, Sarwal, each one of them comes from a different lady and is part of the Zay collection. And we took this and we went to uh, we identified 20, because we are in the year 2020, we identified 20 trailblazing women from the UAE. This is one of them. Uh, Sheikha Latifa, 
Al Maktoum. She's an Olympic jumper, show jumper. And she wore this to empower her, to show how she is empowered in her heritage while she is performing the, the deed that she is doing. And to carry it further, if I show the next slide, Iman, you spoke of <laughs> You spoke about um, empowering Special Olympics. This is Sheikha, uh, Sheikha bin Sultan Al Qasimi, and she is a member of that team. Uh, and she is one of those amazing young ladies who is trying to present uh, or trying to transcend all the obstacles that life has can provide uh, to a person. And the third example that I wanted to show is this one, which is of a ballerina. And not many people, I mean, if people were shocked because they saw you wearing colors, Iman, uh, I wonder what would they think when they see a, a ballerina from the UAE. Again, we put an old lady's thob on her and we, we videoed her performing. And I wanted to show this small clip of that. I hope it will play. Yeah. I love that so it's it's really amazing how, how much women have been empowered in the United Arab Emirates and how wonderful the process that is taking place in empowering them, which leads us to our 11th uh, sustainable uh, goal. And um, I think Iman, you're going to be helping me with this one, right? Or is it Hiba? I think it's Hiba. Well, it is, uh, it, me, yeah, it's me. Gender no, it's okay. It's okay. You got carried away with what you're looking at. I'm sure. I'm happy you are enjoying it. <laughs> yeah, because I was in this uh, uh, ballerina's lady with our traditional dress. I am so touched with this uh, way of taking photo shots, showing uh, our culture, but that can be implemented with the modern life. Can Correct. be. Uh, you can. You are sending a very strong message. Uh, which says that you can wear kandura, you can wear our, your traditional dress, you can show your culture, and you can move on in the whatever you want to do. Yeah, it I doesn't think, stop you. Yeah, nothing, nothing. Don't say the kandura will stop you or your culture. The, the main thing, your culture can't stop you. No, it will give you the power to move. This is the woman empowerment. Our culture give us the power to move. Very our true. Cultures, uh, uh, give the wisdom to our government to give the power uh, power to uh, to the ladies from the emirati lady uh, to uh, find the ministers from the UAE. You can find ambassadors from the UAE. Uh, Her Excellency Lana Zakinusayba, she is the first permanent uh, uh, member in the UN, and uh, it can't be. Uh, I think you can't find those uh, women. Um, in other countries, maybe the others will take, they might take 10 years, maybe, but mm -hmm. we are so, um, how I can, so developed in women empowerment, I, I, I think in my opinion, that we other, we can just give the, our experience to other countries, give them how we empower the woman and keep the culture. Uh, right. it's, important thing it's not something that you can give your cultures to be empowerment or to be like a developed person you can keep your own culture your own dress your own burger even burger i saw uh, i remember when i was in the university in al ain uh, the ladies from al ain you know doctora they wear burger they Definitely. Yeah, m more than the other emirates, they, and they were put uh, the swore whiskey on it, the yes. sauce. They put it in the yeah. burger. And we have examples. <laughs> we have examples in the collection. Very true. Yeah, and they uh, put it in a very nice way, and I think it makes uh, us more uh, unique. It makes uh, it shows the eye. Uh, one of the Greek ladies. It, uh, uh, to be honest, it's not. She's not only one. Mostly the Greek ladies. 
they interest in the burger yes. and they a lot about the burger uh, why it's for and well, why did you make it uh, to be honest it's not to cover the face i think it's make the face more beautiful this what yes. i mean this what i think it's my personal opinion because who's wearing burger i think his eyes is appearing the arabic eyes and uh, it will be show the power of the woman yes it's it's it can be used yeah. as a medium to enhance uh, and show uh, the features that are more beautiful in a woman. It can be used as a tool for that. Uh, unfortunately, the burga is, is something that requires a whole um, uh, series of uh, webinars in order to talk about it and to analyze it because it can, it can be used. It's, it's like a sword. It can be used from both edges. Uh, it can be taken as a tool of uh, submission and a tool of um, um, unempowerment. And it can also be taken as a tool for protection from the element, enhancing certain elements of beauty and so on. So you can read a lot into it. And especially at this moment of time, when every the whole world is putting a burga on them, you, you like it or not, we are all wearing it. So, so it's very ironic that uh, uh, we are, we are uh, the whole world is beginning to use something that many people criticize when, when, when women wear it or wore it from uh, this area of the world. Um, I don't want to delay because I know they will, they will push us to finish very fast and I want us to go into this point. So maybe you can explain it to our audience, uh, Iman, please. Uh, the, uh, according to the president uh, degree announced uh, in 2018, 50 of the Federal National Council elected members should be women in the UAE, and uh, 25 of the cabinet level minister role in the UAE are held by women. Women are up to 20% their diplomatic corps, and they are they have a lot of positions in the UAE. Um, further. Uh, uh, our Economic uh, Forum 2020 Global Gender Gap Report said that the UAE is one of the region best performing countries, having closed the gender gap by 66%, which is a very huge amount. Uh, nobody yeah. can uh, imagine that. Uh, I, I think uh, it's uh, uh, the UAE has uh, passed a lot of uh, ways to give the to, uh, give the women the power. How to implement the women in many uh, fields: the economic fields, the political fields, the cultural fields. Uh, whatever she can be good on it, she can do it. This is what our leadership give us the point, and they uh, support us. And mm -hmm. I'm insisting on supporting because I I face a lot of women not only in Greece, in many countries, who's saying by word, you have a very good government. That's what makes you here. That's what puts you in this level. It's not, okay, you have a good family, you have a good, uh, um, a good position, good education, but you have to have a very good government which supports you. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's very true. And, yeah. and to take it on a, on a very, uh, you know, um, basic level and to take it to, um, uh, to, to illustrate the point that you are making. I would like us to go to the next slide whereby we have an example of how one can uh, sustain cultural heritage by, um, by empowering those who work in it. As you see here, this is a collaboration that we have done through the ZEI initiative whereby we, we worked with an international designer who was creating all the dress formats and costumes for a presentation that took place last year in the, during the UAE National Day. And we had over 400, 500 women uh, dressed in this national dress. And it was based on the Zay Initiative's collection. And we worked with them in order to empower the craftswomen that are working in this field and to allow them to excel and produce their work. And at the same time, to sustain this heritage, to show it on stage, to present represented as a form of identity, as a form of 
sustainable culture and so on and so forth. And if we go to the next slide, I will show you another uh, example where you, uh, Iman, has, have worked in this as well. And I'm gonna le let you describe this. Yes, uh, this uh, was a meeting, uh, this is not a, sorry, not a meeting, it's a cultural exhibition. We held the cultural exhibition in November, last November, and uh, the the, uh, the leader, uh, the president of the UNESCO here in the uh, in Greece, she participated on this one, and uh, she was amazed about the cultural uh, that she discovered. Uh, we have uh, many uh, uh, common things in our culture, the Greek culture and the UAE culture. Uh, as an example, uh, you can see they are they were uh, looking for the mahafa. Yes. And the, the, uh, yeah, the fan, and they have it in their culture. Also, they ask about the perfumes. They were uh, very uh, they love the perfumes from the UAE and how mm -hmm. we do it. Uh, there was a burger, and she was insist on knowing the burger because okay. it's not something common. And she's the president of the UNESCO, and she was asking a lot about the burger, the paints, and uh, how we, the uh, there was a paint in the, our background. It's about the woman empowerment and education mainly. And yes. uh, uh, those are very old uh, paints. It's not a new ones for uh, Sheikh Zayed uh, bin Sultan since the beginning of the unity of the Emirates, not uh, from yes. the, and it's like in white and black. And yes. uh, she was like, uh, she was uh, really shocked and she was amazed about how the UAE in 15, uh, next year we will complete our 15 years of uh, the Emirates uh, unit. And it's like a short time if you uh, compare it with other countries, it's very really short time to have those kind of achievements in the woman right. born field and sustainable fields and many other fields. Uh, this and, means, and then, yeah. Yes, go ahead, please, go ahead. Uh, also, she was asking about, uh, there was the designs for uh, uh, Maria, and uh, yes. it was the, the Maria, necklace. Yeah, the necklace. And uh, what she was asking about, is it pure gold? Yeah. And I told her, this is our luxury things. It's mm -hmm. thing you, it has to be in each emergency can, uh, house and it's pure gold. It's, it can't be a fake, it has to be gold. And she was amazed, really amazed. Amazing work, wonderful, really wonderful. And if we go to the next slide, you will see that again, through the Zayin Ishtar, and I keep comparing the two elements because it shows how aligned these goals are with the objectives that we have. And Hiba, I know you attended many of these programs that I did. I, you were a very wonderful, wonderful student that uh, we spent almost a year working and you, you came to many of the functions that we had done. Uh, do you remember? Yes, um, I really remember uh, how uh, was impressive the sessions that I think uh, um, that added uh, additional value to the cultural affairs that uh, that I attend as uh, as events, and um, uh, I I remembered that um, how many. Um, uh, literature that uh, attend that event and uh, I, I became really attached to the cultural because of you. This is Thank you. <laughs> I, I wasn't really <laughs> interested in such things before I attend your uh, cultural uh, sessions that I used attended in uh, Emirates Palace and uh, in many uh, other places as well. And uh, I really appreciate uh, all the efforts that have been given by you, doctor, personally, uh, and uh, also for UAE culture, how you represent the UAE culture and the heritage. And um, I think this is will last not for our generation only. It will really uh, play a huge role in the cultural affairs in UAE. Thank you very much, Doctor. I think I think what is wonderful and what is unique is that we are living in a time where uh, prosperity is allowing this government and this country to really empower its people. 
on many different levels, uh, men and women, education, uh, um, work, uh, uh, aspirations, uh, look at the way that people are learning and studying and going even to the space uh, that UAE is accomplishing so much and it is very exciting and very empowering to all of us to see the accomplishments that are taking place in the UAE. Which brings me to our next slide and I think Hippa you're going to help me with this one. Uh, and it relates to the peace, justice, and uh, strong institutions. Uh, would you like to take us through this, Iba? Yes, doctor. Uh, UA government adopted one of the uh, transparency system uh, that opened the data policy in order to make government data and information accessible to the public. Uh, as per the UAE's uh, constitution, the federal judiciary enjoys full independence and justice um, in the basis of its authority. Uh, also, the UAE's commitment to the rule of law has maintained order uh, against the violence and uh, contributed to the uh, a sense of justice and security for the UAE nationals and the residents alike. Uh, in 2015, the UAE ba based uh, the anti-discrimination law, which prohibits any form of discrimination of people. Uh, also, the Ministry of Justice oversees the courts and uh, uh, the departments across the UAE. In addition, uh, full text of the UAE's law that cover different areas uh, concerning people and business can be found in the Ministry of Justice uh, uh, legislation uh, portal. Uh, also, one uh, of the reasons that uh, make our security system really very strong, that the federal authority for uh, identity and citizenship completed uh, the launch of electronic identity card for whole population in the country, including nationals and residents. Uh, the card carries uh, biometric details of uh, the holders in order to uh, verify and confirm the identity of each individual through a personal number and a smart card related to the biological feature as well. Uh, this is aimed to protect identity and tackle the crime. Uh, Wonderful. This is amazing and it's quite a, a long list of achievements and uh, to take it from that higher high goals and uh, aspirations, uh, I think the integral part of this is dialogue and dialogue among people on many levels and we feel through the Zay initiative we are trying to achieve that through this webinar for example that we've got now with you and the other list of webinars that we've been doing the whole this whole past year this is one way for us to introduce this dialogue this cult cross-cultural dialogue between us and the others and the global uh, families that we will hope to forge as we get to know each other. We also are producing it through another um, slide that I have, and that is the, um, if we can go to the next slide, Emma. I hope we have it. Yes, uh, through our um, website, through the blog, through the uh, monthly blog that we produce, through the newsletter that we produce. These are all different forms of dialogues that one can have with one another. As you said, Hiba, like when you came to these lectures and these uh, presentations or exhibitions or functions, they were all full of information the way we are doing now. And by giving these information in various formats, you are allowing other cultures to understand you. You are dissip uh, dissipating any misconceptions like the ones Iman mentioned about the black or dress or burgo or whatever it is about these misconceptions that many people have about the culture that we live in. Uh, the, um, the presence of the Instagram itself has awarded us an amazing, amazing 
way to reach out to people on a daily basis, on a 24 hour basis, all around the world. People come in, look at our images, read the information, understand a little bit more about our culture, understand who we are and have a possibility to have a dialogue. Some people like the black abaya, others they prefer a colored one. Some people think this is too much of a, a shela that is coming off and showing much of our hair. Others think, no, we should be working with the times. So it is wonderful to be able to have this dialogue because only through dialogue, we can learn from each other and we can make our uh, individual perspectives closer to each other. And uh, I really want to thank you, uh, young ladies, for the opportunity to have this dialogue with me and to introduce your culture uh, to our audience. And I want to commend you for the role that you are playing in representing your culture and representing your country. And uh, I am sure anyone that is listening is very proud of this. And sadly, I have to end because I'm getting message to, messages to say there are questions that we need to answer. Thank you so much for being here with me. And let's invite Emma to come in with the questions. Wow, ladies, thank you so much. That really was just fascinating. I've learned so much tonight. I really do need to um, align further with the Sustainable Development Goals. Dr. Reem, could you just... Um, follow up a little bit regarding sustainable development goal number 11 and just explain to us a little bit more about that that would be fantastic number 11 which is the, the sustainable um, cities yes um, I think it is very important that uh, this goal is um, is uh, for uh, oversees the issues related to cities environments uh, and and the people that live in them uh, you can take it and bring it down into and 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 use it in the format that you feel more comfortable or it associates more to the work that you are in aligned with so if i'm talking about um um produce, everyday produce, we, we can implement it to that. If we are talking about uh, uh, industry and how we carry our industry and make sure that we are fulfilling the roles that are uh, that allow for sustainable use, well, then we would apply it to that. As far as the Zay Initiative is concerned, we feel that it is through the um, uh, implementing of programs that encourage dialogue and uh, discussion and openness among people, as well as uh, allow for um, training um, of imp uh, training to implement uh, traditional crafts as well as traditional and heritage um, aspects to continue and be sustained for a future generation. Wow. So, so, so much that needs to be done, I guess, globally and also just in actually how much we can do on an individual level and also on a company level, I think is so important. And obviously for the UAE on a country level, I think, I think that's what's amazing is that everyone can do so many, so many things to all lead to try and reach this sustainable development goal. Um, Heba, uh, can you share with the audiences what your experience were this year in Norway with regards to the pandemic? Um, well, um, uh, um, according to uh, your uh, knowledge, that um, uh, the European situation was a bit uh, worse than the other countries when it started. And for us here in Norway, uh, within uh, two weeks, uh, we reached 8,000 cases in Norway, which make the whole government an emergency uh, situation where they uh, close the borders and uh, I have to uh, do um, uh, uh, um, to send all of our nationals back home contact everybody to be back to UAE and uh, I've been the last one uh, in that time here in Norway alone. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, and I remember exactly the last flight for Emirates uh, and uh, 28th of March uh, for a quite long time. Um, that time I remember uh, the main concern uh, that was in my head to just 
send everybody home, be sure that everybody is safe. And the last thing that mm -hmm. I am here alone, it's okay. I took the responsibility, my uh, duties as a diplomat representing my country in the embassy in Norway alone for uh, during that uh, situation, it was really um, an honor to serve my country and uh, uh, under the crisis and within all uh, with all of our colleagues abroad. Uh, and uh, I just would like to say that Norway and UAE take the lead um, defeating uh, that pandemic and play a, a fantastic role uh, internationally uh, and um, either uh, and uh, shows their commitment to the international cooperation was shown either by uh, uh, humanitarian assistance to the countries and the people in need and uh, sending the health equipment to uh, other countries. And, uh, Wonderful. Just, just fantastic. And Iman, have you got similar experiences or different experience you can share with us from Greece? Uh, for me, uh, as a diplomat in Greece, on the second wave, I go back to the Emirates and I came back alone in July to Greece uh, to be alone in the embassy. And um, it was quite difficult for me because the first wave uh, was very easy in Greece, but currently the second wave is very tough and very hard. We have a lot of cases. And uh, we, are, we are on lockdown since uh, three weeks, totally locked down. Nobody can move out without a paper, without anything. Uh, maybe my experience is a little bit dif different and difficult because I'm a mother for four kids. I, I said in my previous uh, meeting, and uh, with the online classes, I have a very, uh, 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 it's, I can't say it's bad, but it's really tough. Because uh, it's not easy to manage your kids in uh, uh, school and to be alone in an embassy and to be a charged affair uh, to control everything. But it's really a very good experience because uh, in the tough time, you know the person and uh, uh, it's my job. I have to do it appropriate or I have to leave it. So uh, well, we are, women, women are multitaskers, and yes. I think it's amazing that we have that skill, that you can multitask on many levels at the same time. Uh, and I love the factor that you women, young women or this generation are managing to juggle taking care of your children, uh, uh, providing for your families, uh, um, acting on your duties and implying all of this. And still you can look beautiful and wear a lovely dress and very presentable. So I really commend you both for all thank of the you work. Much, Dora. Yeah. You are, thank you, you are really, uh, it's so I think this, uh, I want to say something for the Z, I, uh, it's really an uh, excellent uh, project. I would Thank participate you. in anything related to Z because it's, uh, I would appreciate anyone who's representing my culture. It's mm -hmm. a, a very important thing. It's uh, something I didn't expect because it's my first post to be in Greece, to be honest. And uh, from this post, I discovered that I, as a diplomat, I'm not uh, for the UAE. I, I have to tell the world about the UAE. This okay. is what I am. Okay. And uh, Z is doing the best from the UAE, showing the world what is the UAE, United Arab Emirates. Thank you very thank much, Victoria and the team. No, thank you. I'm so proud to meet you guys, uh, both of you, and to, to have this session with you. And I'm sure we're going to have many more. Uh, in future, and you have the Zay at your fingertips. You can always go to the website and use it as many times as you like and introduce your uh, individuals that you meet over there to it so that they would have the information that they need about this culture. Uh, doctor, I would like also to add uh, my uh, thankful uh, and really appreciation uh, to uh, you and the initiative. We need such initiative to be also abroad, either uh, in Greece or in Norway. And um, you are more than welcome to hold a session with uh, mm -hmm. to pick the authority that uh, you I would like to 
have a cooperation with uh, in Norway. Uh, and um, I just would like to uh, assure that we have a very good connection here and reliable uh, institution, either heritage or cultural affairs um, institutions. And uh, wonderful, wonderful. we are looking for such initiatives, doctor. Wonderful. I look forward to coming to both Athens and, and Norway. And I would love to have a few exhibitions that we can work jointly together collaboratively in order to represent the culture of the UAE and the Arab world as a whole. Inshallah. Dr. Reem, as ever, you, you answered one of the questions that has just come up from the audience. When is, the, when is going to be the first live exhibition following the pandemic? I know every country is different at the moment. Dubai, um, or the UAE hosted JITEX just last week as a live event, um, which was fantastic. Um, and shows the UAE really pushing forward, but but I know it's very different everywhere. But Dr. Reem, has the has the Zay Initiative got any any plans for any live events in the near future? We are working on a number of things. We've got them on the burner. Uh, nothing has materialized so far because we have to work with the times. So we're hoping we're hoping by 2021, uh, the whole world will be able to open up. We are looking forward to uh, Expo, which is taking place in Dubai soon. And we hope that uh, we would have some form of a participation through that. And now we've got our ambassadors in all these countries that we, we have met all these past few months. And they are amazing women. And I'm sure if we put our brains together, we can accomplish something beautiful and have it carry on from one place to the other. Exactly. Well, all it leaves for me to say is thank you both Iman and Hiba for joining us from, from Greece and Norway, respectively. Just a fabulous session highlighting the importance of sustainable development. Um, I've learned so much, so I'm sure the audience also have. Um, thank you also for the a massive thank you to the Office of Public and Cultural Diplomacy at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Abu Dhabi, and particularly Gabriella and Elhelm, who have been absolutely fabulous running the the four events with us um over the last over the last couple of months so so, yes, so thank, thank you, you Emma, so for much. mentioning thank that you. and for for giving them a shout out and i appreciate all their work and you know behind the scenes these are the the people who really make this sort of project succeed thank you so much and i look forward to uh, further collaboration in the coming year. I wish you both and our audience a wonderful, wonderful end of year. Everyone, please stay safe and uh, look forward to meeting you in person in the near future. Take care. Perfect.